Welcome to Nani Notes. Well, page is looking pretty blank there. Pick up that compass and let's get to work. Today's topic is isosceles triangle. Now, we're going to have a little fun here. We're going to review one of our, well, our funnest construction, our most basic. So put the needle on S, gap it to T, and give that thing a swing. I want a real compass construction, the real deal. And then you're going to flip your compass around and you're going to gap it from T back to S and you're going to give it a swing that way. Oh, beautiful. All right, so what do we got there? Well, you know that construction. You've done it so many times before. That is the perpendicular bisector. We'll even put the marks on there and I'm going to call that point M because I like M for midpoint. And um, well, that's the classic perpendicular bisector construction we've been doing. Now, something different this time. I'm going to pick a random point W. It can be on the, it can be up here, it can be down there. I just, a random point on the perpendicular bisector. Now, for demonstration, I'm going to put it up there. And uh, I'm going to connect some segments there. And let's see what we've got here. Well, I know this, that WM is congruent to itself by the flexive property. I know perpendicular lines form right angles, or I could say two lines are perpendicular, they form four right angles. We have that theorem, I think three, nine or something. And um, I know I've got a triangle right here. Now, oh, remember SM is congruent to MT, I mean, it's half of, when I say perpendicular bisector, perpendicular, the bisector part takes care of that. So I've got a right triangle right there, okay? And I've got a right triangle over here. Hmm. And I build this one. I can see it looks like a reflection because it is. This triangle is congruent to this triangle. Now, we know how to prove that because I could say SWM, TWM, you can see it, side, well, side, angle, side. So, that's your reason that these two triangles are congruent. And then, from there, we're going to say, well, that, therefore, these two segments are congruent by you guessed it, corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Now, I could also conclude this, that these two angles are also congruent by our good friend CPCTC. Hmm. Well, um, this is really the essence, um, we're going through it with proof, this is the essence of this section 4.7 in our textbook. And we're going to do some exercises as well as having a more elegant proof. So, um, let's see, I'm going to say, therefore, that SWT is an isosceles triangle. Now, I think I put up some of these right here. We're going to see these symbols. That's going to be our theorem 4.7 and 4.8. I'm writing it there, jotting it down as a biconditional. Okay, are we good with this page? Well, okay, it's, it's all part of one big page on your papers. Um, but let's let's skip down to here. I've got these. I got this triangle here for you. And I think what we're going to do. Oh, I should say I, I know what we're going to do because I'm here. We're going to look at this base angles theorem. No, no, no. Don't write it down because it's. I already handed you that theorem sheet. But let's just look at a more elegant proof here. Let's say. I've got those two. See, if I got these two sides congruent, what I'm saying is that, well, these two angles must be congruent. That's, that's not the proof, that's kind of. And we're going to write it this way. That's the shorthand for theorem 4.7. And it pretty much says right there, I got a pair of congruent sides. That implies the opposite angles are congruent. Okay, let's clean that triangle up again. And let's say we go this way, the base angle, the converse of the base angles theorem. Well, it's just a reverse. It says if the two angles of a triangle are congruent, 
we'll call them the base angles, then the opposite sides are congruent. And we're going to write it that way. Okay. All right. Now, I promised you a kind of a cool proof. So check this out. If I take this, ah, there it is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, there's what? Well, watch. This triangle is congruent to its own reflection by side, side, side is congruent to side, side, side. So what that means is that the triangle QVZ is congruent to the reflection Z, V, Q, because remember the order does matter, and therefore by corresponding parts of congruent triangles, angle Q is congruent to angle Z. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Now that is elegant. Now let's see if I can clean it up and get ready for the next one. So let's suppose we do this. And I'm going to start, I'm going to go the other way there, and I'm going to say, well, Let's suppose I start with the base angles. Well, I can say that these triangles, I can say this angle, Q, side, angle, I'm sorry, right sorry about that. Angle, side, angle is congruent to angle, side, angle. And once again, this triangle is congruent to its own reflection by angle, side, angle. And if that's true, once that is true, or once I know that, then I can say that by corresponding parts of congruent triangles, so are the opposite sides. So what you're really doing is proving both of these. That one, one do I have? Well, that one, one more go. No, there. There they are. So there you go. We can we can even have a little bit a little proof that way. I like the first proof where we kind of you know it gets a little you know, more a little more to it, but you get a lot of understandings about the about these various triangles. But this one's really slick. Now, don't put that compass away just yet, because I want you to make this. Well, hang on. Where's my compass? We're going to make half perpendicular bisector, just one side. It doesn't matter if it's above or below. Give it a swing there. <clears throat> Cap your compass this way. Give it a swing this way. And what that is going to give you, it's going to give me my intersection H. I'm going to connect the dots. Now, what's interesting here is... Um, well, we already we discussed this. This is the equilateral triangle. But this is why. See, because... Well, hang on. No, no let's... I guess let me, let, me, let me start this way. JH and JK. And that would be both. See? This is the radius JH. This is JK. They are congruent because they're both radii of the circle J. Okay? Now, I also know, well, I guess I messed that up a little bit when I did that. Yeah, these two are supposed to stick out like that. And um, I also know, looking at the green compass, I can see I put the needle on the K. J, K, and H, K are also radii of the same arc. So I'm going to say this. Okay. And what that's going to tell me, if these two are congruent to each other, and these two are congruent to each other, by the transitive property, all three are congruent. And there's your justification for why that makes an equilateral triangle. In a similar way, 
we know the base angles theorem can just be applied three times. So I can apply the base angles theorem this way because these two sides are congruent, makes the two base angles congruent. Then I can apply the base angles theorem this way because these two sides congruent, makes those base angles congruent. And by the transitive property, again, all three angles are congruent. So we are going to know that an equilateral triangle is equiangular. Yeah, it's kind of fun. All right, are we done with this compass? Well, hang on, let's see, let's see. Uh, yeah, I think we're done with the compass. Uh, um, just have a, a little bit of a question here, and you can, I, I may have left you some room to sketch this for your notes. I've got a question for you. Well, I got two questions for you. It's either yes or no. Is an isosceles triangle equilateral? Well, I've got an isosceles triangle marked here, and it's got these two, and I'm saying, well, I can see pretty clearly that this triangle is not equilateral. So I'm going to give that a big no. How about this? It's an equilateral iso uh, triangle isosceles. I've got three congruent sides. Well, does it have two congruent sides? Yes. Let's ask that again. Does it have two congruent sides? Yes. Huh. Well, it's got three congruent sides. It also has two congruent sides. It obeys the properties of an isosceles triangle. So very important when you're speaking in logical terms. Isosceles is not equilateral. Remember, maybe, no, it doesn't count. Now, equilateral, by contrast, that is isosceles, all right? Okay, so that's the, that's the fun part. And now we're gonna crank through the, uh, our, the rest of our worksheet. So get your pencils out and let's take some notes. Let's have some fun. Now, this is actually the practice. This is uh, published from McDougall et al. And I thought we'd just do their work this time. Now, we have four questions involving the same diagram. Now, you can't assume anything else. You can only go by what you got there. I'm going to keep starting with a fresh diagram. I think you only have it once, so uh, you might make little marks on it or you can scribble in the margins. But we're going to have four questions asked about the same diagram. Now, there's a lot that looks like uh, it's going on here, but you got to just put in the tick marks where you see them. There you go. AE congruent to EC. And that's, that's okay, that's a fact, because that's, that's what you're being told. Now, what I don't want you doing is assuming anything else. ABC is isosceles? I don't think so. This is the same diagram. All you know is that. So all you've got is this triangle, which means all you've got is that. And if you're going to write it down, then you can say EAC congruent to ECA, triangle C, ah, ECA. Wow. Yeah, well, let's keep this going. Let's try a couple more. Same diagram. No, oh, giving away the punchline, dang it. Well, okay, in this case, the given, DAE congruent to DEA. Well, again, that's only affecting this area. The only thing you know for a fact is that. Not that, but about that. All the other things you think you see, they're not true. I can distort this figure and make it look like that. All you can go by is what you know. Valuable lesson in life. Let's try another one. Oh, dang it. Well, let's put in our givens. Well, <laughs> you see what's going on there. We've got an equiangular triangle, which we now know is equilateral. And Again, the moral of the story is that this stuff just don't matter. We, we don't know what's going on with that. All we know is that with this triangle, we've got that. So your solution, which I guess I left up there already, BD congruent to DF, congruent to FB. 
nothing else. Okay, one more. And these are, I think these are kind of fun, especially if you have a magic paper where you can hold a triangles apart like this. Okay, let's put the givens on there. Oh, those are some big givens. So it looks like the whole triangle is equilateral. Now, again, we don't know about anything inside these lesser triangles, but we do know the base angles theorem, and that's going to tell me that those three angles I've got shady in red, and they're going to be right there, and they're going to look like that. And those are congruent. Okay. All right. That's it for that figure. Let's move on. We've got a bunch of problems. Um, and some of them were just solving for x, and some were coming up with a perimeter. Here we go. Find x and y. Well, you got every one of these. You're going to look at this. Congruent sides. That means you got congruent angles. The base angles are congruent. So I've got two congruent angles down there. And I am going to set, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to, I'm going to take 98 away from 180. That leaves me 82. Okay. So now I'm not going to solve for X and Y. Just, I'm just going to tell you that you can do it easy. This equals this. This equals this. Next one, how are we going to do this? Again, you've got your base angles theorem, which tells you that those two angles are congruent. So this one's 53. This equals 53. And then let's do this. Let's take 106 away from 180. It's going to give us 74. Your second equation, 8y plus 10, equals 74. Let's keep this momentum rolling. And again, in these, all we're doing is we are working out, we're solving for x and y. I know this, so my base angles are congruent. This time, I'm going to set these two equal to 180. So sorry, <laughs> set them equal to each other. Sorry. Let's work that out. Add 41 to both sides, divide by 4. Now this one's a little different. Let's substitute our values back in into these expressions. And now I know I've got 49 and 49. Good thing they came out the same number. Otherwise, I would say I made a mistake. What's 49 and 49? 98. So what are you going to do? You're going to set this expression equal to 82. Easy, squeezy. Okay, I'm leaving you a little bit. I don't want to do it all for you. Ah, find the perimeter. Now, finally, they, these are pretty good. Maybe I should leave a couple blank. I'll get you started. We'll do an easy one together. Base angles theorem tells me this. Therefore, I can set this expression equal to each other. Now, two-step equation, my gosh, you, you guys, you all got that. Remember to substitute back in 5 plus 4. And do substitute into both sides. That's a good way to catch yourself. You substitute into both, ensure that you get the same value. And remember, when you're done, add them all together. Perimeter is going to be the sum of the three sides. 18? Okay. How many more of these we got? Well, we got a couple. It might get repetitive, so let me say that again. All right, bad joke, but let's. Okay, well, well, this one's kind of the same way, but maybe I'll just set this one up for you. So what are you going to do? You're going to set those two expressions equal to each other. Solve for x.
once you've got x, substitute it back in. Do you get the same value? Yes, you do. You got 8 and 8. So then what are you going to do? Well, I guess you can, you can add the rest up. You've got 8 and 8 and 12. That's your parameter. Another one. Now, I like this one. It gives you a little bit of a choice. Which two sides, which two expressions are you going to set equal to each other? I don't know. Are you going to set this one and this one equal? How about this one and this one? How about this one and this one? you got three choices. It doesn't matter. It's your choice. We know equiangular, equilateral. We could say it's a combination of the of the base angle, well, converse of the base angle theorem and the transitive property. Well, which ones did I pick? Well, I guess I picked these two. It's because I like that 17. So let's work that out. Add 17 to both sides. Subtract 2x from both sides. There's my x. Let's substitute back in there. Now, um, I know my students will just substitute into 1 and then multiply by 3. Don't do that. See, this is, you know, checking your work is actually part of doing a good job. Substitute into all three of them. This, that's your fail-safe, because you need to come up with the same value on all three. Now we, we see, do we? Yes, we do. We got three 11s, so that means we're good to go with 33 on a perimeter. Okay, almost there. Ah, oh, now I think this is the same. Well, same, same exercise. So come on, you guys, you can do this. You're going to pick any of those two, set them equal to each other, solve for x, and substitute. I've got to leave you one. No, oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I guess since you have a sneak peek on that one, let's go through it. Um, again, base angles. Here, we're only going to have these two congruent to each other. And since they are congruent to each other, um, oh my, <laughs> I knew something was, something was amiss. Okay, here we go. We set up the equation. Set these two expressions equal to each other. Subtract 5x from both sides. Add 32, then divide by 5. Substitute, and you are good as gold. And, you know, I think that's going to do it because, honestly, i got to leave you guys something. It's the same, same problem, same kind of thing. Um, so let's just, let's just leave it right there and say, uh, get, your, get these problems worked out and uh, make sure you show your work and get this all sent in. If you're in my class, since it's the year of the COVID and we're using these worksheets, you know, take a picture of it, scan it with your cell phone and send it in to me. And, um, and if you're not in my class, hey, thanks for joining us. But thank you all for watching Monuments.